You remember how Horizon Zero Dawn was a good game overshadowed by the release of Breath of the Wild? Or how Forbidden West was a good game put out to pasture when Elden Ring came along? Or even the Burning Shores DLC, which was a solid addition, yet once again found itself in an overstuffed AAA sandwich as one of its weakest ingredients. Well, you'll be happy to learn that LEGO Horizon Adventures has plenty of room to breathe all by itself. But you may be less happy to know that it just ends up overshadowed by its own potential anyway. Goodbye, the show where I tell you about a thing and whether or not you should actually buy that thing. Today, that thing is LEGO Horizon Adventures. Can't always be perfect. First off, let me make this clear. LEGO Horizon Adventures is an enjoyable time. I love the Horizon series, so I'm not going into this spin-off adventure with a negative preface that leans me towards disappointment. Quite the opposite, actually. I love Horizon, I love LEGO, and I have the LEGO tool neck right by me while I work. This game should have been perfect for me, but it's not, and probably not just for me. I do want to make sure I mention the good things though. First off, the graphics are incredible. Yes, it's LEGO, but it really looks like LEGO, right down to the scratches and smudges on the plastic, the rough surface of certain blocks, and the shine of the lighting across the environments. The animation is also excellent, more akin to the LEGO movie's stop-motion-esque movement as opposed to classic LEGO games where the plastic bends because it's just easier that way. Even after 5 hours or 20 hours, I can't help but admire the levels as I bash my way through them, or notice the details on close-up shots of character models during the dialogue. Wow. It's also just a great game for shutting off. You know, those games that are good to play when you just really don't want to think about anything and need a path to follow or some objectives to grab, enemies to fight or things to collect. Most of the time while playing, I just put on Spotify in the background of the PS5 and ran through level after level and it was a really fun time. However, as fun as it can be, the simplicity is both a strength for the game, but also a weakness that starts to show the seams and the bricks pretty early on. Despite being a slightly different style of LEGO game, with an isometric view and fully LEGOized environments, LEGO Horizon Adventures is missing a lot of what you might expect. The first thing that was apparent to me was collectibles. There's nothing extra to grab here. You'll find not-so-hidden chests and structures to build around the levels, but these are nothing more than a way to give you a few extra studs to spend once you get back to the hub town. Not a single mini-kit in sight. The gold bricks are the core progression, so these aren't hidden or extra either. You'll get them at the end of a level or for completing an optional objective on the mission board in town, which is usually just elemental kills or using certain gadgets and stuff like that. There are red bricks to unlock later on, but these are just from returning to old areas to do tougher machine hunts, which are just more boss fights. The hub town, Mother's Heart, is where you'll be in between each linear level and will grow as you collect gold bricks and spend otherwise pointless studs to level up with some minor perks, customize things like having hot dog statues, rocket ships and a big donut bridge, you can also buy outfits from the tailors, which includes an extensive selection from Zero Dawn, Lego City, Lego Ninjago, and some other fun picks. So that's the Lego game stuff. But what about the Horizon stuff? Well, it doesn't really add anything for fans of the series. You remember how it goes, don't you? If anything, it can detract. It mixes up the opening of Zero Dawn and sets up an alternate and simplistic story using familiar characters, villains and settings. It's nothing canon, and I didn't expect it to be, and it leans into the silliness of LEGO that so often prides itself on not taking itself too seriously. But you're not here to listen to me go on and on. This is a game, not an audiobook. However, it's a shame to see the often over-expansive exploration of the series cut down to zero exploration, and the roster of characters we know and love boiled down to comedy stereotypes when 
let's be honest, they weren't that deep in the first place. Aloy the dreamer, Val the coward, Tirsa the violent old woman. Besides, the punch evil in the face really hard strategy is so much more fun. And Erend, the oaf who loves donuts. Yes! It's fine! Great. These are your four playable characters that you unlock throughout the game, with their own playstyles, weaponry, and gadgets available to them. And you can switch between them at the start of a level or in Mother's Heart, but not mid-level. Aloy is equipped with her iconic bow, focusing on combat at range. It's somewhat disappointing then when Val and Tirsa are also ranged focus characters, using throwing spears and random item explosives respectively. It was only later on when I unlocked Erend with his hammer did melee become an option, and then I pretty much just stuck out the rest of the game as him. So what are we looking at in terms of pricing? Well, I've not done an incredible job at selling the game so far, but how about this? Yeah, I don't think that's gonna do it. LEGO Horizon Adventures is near full price at a staggering £60. Sure, the graphics are gorgeous and it's a AAA IP AAA LEGO AAA title, but when there's so little depth and unmet potential, it feels like a tall stretch. If the game was sitting at around £20 or even £30, I think I could find it a lot easier to justify and even encourage but doubling the maximum of what I feel it's worth makes it a whole lot harder. Now if you're looking to pick this up for your kids, then the price tag isn't so different from that of Sackboy A Big Adventure, but unless they've played that already or you don't mind handing over the big bucks, I would strongly recommend waiting for a sale or something like that. It's a good game, but it's not £60 good, if that makes sense. Now before you start thinking, old man yells at Lego Cloud, yes I know this is a game angled towards a younger audience, and I have no doubt that it fits that purpose. However, I'm also the demographic for both Horizon and Lego, so there'll be plenty of adults like myself wondering if £60 on this game is going to be worthwhile, especially with basic expectations from the universal appeal of TT Games' Lego Legacy. And the answer is Probably not, no. LEGO Horizon Adventures is a good game, but it's about as shallow as a video game can be, and sometimes even less. It's a shame for both fans of LEGO and Horizon, as this is one I thought could be quite a big step for new LEGO games based on more iconic IPs. It would feel much more worthwhile at a lower price tag, and there are still plenty of reasons to enjoy the experience, but it could have been so much more. As is the case with Horizon's history, LEGO Horizon Adventures is just... whelming, at best. 